the most educational. <laughs> I think one of my last posts was, I have the random urge to cook pad thai. So <laughs> uh, if, if you want to be part of this conversation, okay. raise your hand. But before that, Shankar, like, do I have to sound the emergency alarm? Because not many people have shared the room. Uh, yeah, it looks like it, because for a Saturday morning with such an amazing topic, we need at least 250 people in the room. Sound the alarm on... Tra <laughs> share the room, everyone. At the bottom of the screen, <laughs> you'll see the share button, and then you could click share in a post. The reason why you want to share the room is because the LinkedIn audio rooms are not recorded. Okay, so if you don't share it, your network doesn't get the chance to listen in or participate. When you come to the stage, we want to hear whether or not you're on threads, why you chose to be or not be on threads, and what your experience has been, you know, the last three days. To give some context to everyone in the room, threads is Instagram's new app, and they had more than 30 million downloads in 16 hours. And I think they already have passed 100 million, I believe. So, uh, Shankar, what has your experience been on Threads? We'll start with you yeah. and why you're there. Yeah, well, first of all, why am I there? The answer is, if you are serious about your personal brand, about being visible, if you have a business, it's really not a question anymore, uh, as far as I'm concerned. This is a public platform where right now you have equal opportunity with everyone else who's willing to put in some work to get amazing visibility. This morning I saw um, NBC, PBS, you know, all the big established media is coming as well. Uh, my experience has been the following, you know, I mean, I, I again, I see that we all started with a clean slate and I see that people who put in the work, who are there nonstop, uh, who probably have made that their life the, for the past three days, they are getting results. It's a very friendly app as well. Uh, no hostilities, no obscenities, and it's just really refreshing. So that's been uh, my, my experience so far, Sinead. I love it. Um, and I'm trying to bring some people to the stage I'm, it says there's a problem, so we're going to try to fix that. Andrea, uh, share your experience. So I'll share what I love about Threads is one, there's no ads. Yay! Yet. I know that will happen, but it's kind of nice to have a seamless experience. And I don't have a problem reaching out to those that would I would never otherwise reach. I'm talking like authors that I read their books or speakers that I'm super influenced by, my mentors, my teachers, like that are operating in, in such an overwhelmed capacity on these other platforms that to, to hear back from them or to know that they've read a thread because it's so undersaturated saturated right now has been something that I have really enjoyed. And even hearing one of the creators on um, who, who has like a huge following, millions of followers on Instagram, on Facebook, on other places, says that even he is shocked that he is seeing the posts of accounts he has been following that he never sees their posts. So it's just, it just feels more authentic, I guess, more connected and more communal in that way. And it's really going to drive discussions, I think. Let's get a gauge of the audience who here already created a Threads account and start to raise your hands to share because I moved to the desktop. So let's see if that'll fix the problem. But if you have a Threads account, uh, raise your hand. So let me bring up Kizzy. What's up, Kizzy? Good morning. What's going on? What's up, Kizzy? So w tell me what you think about it so far. I enjoy it. I, I actually just posted a thread. It, it feels very communal. It's exciting. It's, it's like the early days of a platform. So I really like it. 
What don't you like about it? I feel a little lost as far as I'm like, what, am I supposed to get an update? Do I, where am I supposed to go? And do I wait? <laughs> like, I guess because I'm so programmed for here, look at the top of this, look at this ad, go to this section. And I realize how strong that programming is by going on threads. You know, it's crazy. Grant Cardone liked my thread two minutes ago. That is That's awesome. Crazy. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. And he like liked it. He liked the one that I said, going to open an audio room on LinkedIn on threads. So, and, and this is what I'm talking about, that a lot of the biggest people um, in business are on threads already. And that's what has surprised me the most actually is like the adoption and, and it's surprising, but not because it's, it's incredible to see Instagram's influence. Like maybe six months ago, somebody, uh, I was having a conversation with somebody and they were like really basing someone's validity on their Instagram followers. And this is like a full grown 50 year old adult. And the cultural influence that Instagram has had, like, I think is the reason why in three days, some of the biggest brands and celebrities are already active on threads because it's already such a big part of their social media strategy. Um, I mean, every single big hmm. brand Absolutely. is already posting on there 20 times a day. And I've never seen that happen with a new app where the big brands are so willing to just jump in full force. But Eden, go ahead and share. I hope I'm saying your name right. Eden? Eden? There you go. Yeah, it's Eden. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't get the mute button off. Um, yeah, um, it's definitely been an interesting experience. It kind of feels like the, the wild, wild west. It's very... Some is Isn't it chaotic. fun? It is. It is. It, um... I'm interested to see how it will actually turn out, you know, like what app it'll actually like turn out to be. Because right now I think everybody's just trying to figure out, you know, like what works and what doesn't. What I really like though is like a lot of people haven't been like promoting on there. So it's nice to actually see like organic like content and people actually trying to talk to one another and engage with one another. So I would really like to actually see like the posts or the like the threads on there actually turn into like really awesome conversations between people. I love it. And it's amazing to to have that because um, business is already being done on there, but without people being so businessy. And what I found really interesting is like the first few days that everyone was like, please just, we don't need to see more educational posts. Can we just keep this fun? Because everyone is just tapped out with the tips that they can consume. The same 10 people, like you said. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely like kind of like the fun atmosphere that they've kind of put on there so far. It's, it's very refreshing. It's nice to see. And for everyone in the audience, especially if you have a business or you're building your personal brand or you host classes or webinars or whatever, if you make them fun, more people will come. Even if it's a serious training where people learn, nobody wants to be falling asleep. So this is something to learn about just human nature. Humans, we like to feel good and have fun, even if we're learning. And it actually helps us learn faster. You Go know, ahead, Nadja. Or Shankar oh. and then Nadja. Yeah, I just wanted to say what, what Andrea mentioned earlier about being able to really reach everyone. Um, the first day I was able to get uh, Mark Cuban uh, from Shark Tag to to connect with me there, follow back, and that just made my day. Um, it's really cool because now I know that we're connected on a first degree. And you know, one thing that I I would like to have better control over is actually 
see who followed me chronologically. And I think uh, it only shows that to you um, alphabetically. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I don't have a good sense of when did who follow me. Oh, I haven't even been looking at that. That's interesting. So Nadia and then Paul. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you do. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a thread. Um, it's almost like a clean slate, a fresh start uh, for me. And I think it's a great opportunity for you know, uh, people to put their message, their authentic self out there. As you mentioned, yeah, people are sick and tired of the same, you know, influencers putting the same content over and over again. So having that fresh start is a big differentiator. It's a great opportunity for, for positioning yourself as a thought leader in your field. What's up, Baba? Oh, I have a six-year-old who wants attention, of course. Uh, so, yeah, I think Threads is a great opportunity. I did put out differences. A lot of people are confused. What's the difference between Threads and Twitter? So in my latest um, newsletter on LinkedIn, I went through all the differences so you can see whether or not it's a good fit for you. However, I agree it shouldn't be, you know, go and repurpose all the content you have on other platforms in there. Take time to have conversations. Take time to reach out to people that, Otherwise, you wouldn't reach out to. Shankar mentioned a great example of, you know, big influencers. It's still early, so you don't have that high barrier of entry or reaching out to people. So uh, I encourage you to try it out and uh, see if that works for you and aim for having meaningful conversations. And try not to be salesy at least for a while. Thank you. I love it. And I, I'm, I like that you mentioned Twitter. I was never a big Twitter user. And just to give everyone context, I've been on threads three days. I have 11, oh, 11, 11 followers. Okay. That's a good luck. So I have 1,111 followers and that's in three days. And I think on Twitter I have, um, wait, it's like 1,143 or something. Yeah, 1,143. So in three days, I've already passed my Twitter following. But it's also like the vibe. Like, again, I was never big on Twitter. So this is coming from a biased perspective. But I always felt that Twitter was a little bit pretentious. And last night, I logged on Twitter. And the first video that I saw was a Labrador or a Golden Retriever getting shot by a cop. And it ruined my day. So I logged off immediately and went to threads because that content doesn't traumatize me <laughs> or ruin my day. So, I mean, yeah, that's just from a user experience. Yeah, that's great. I like also that there is no ads. So it's not every other, you know, thread or is a sponsored ad. So that's a big plus for me at least. Yeah, for sure. Paul, go ahead. And then Najwa. Yeah, great. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, Shanae. Great to see you. I've been at a few of your events and I'm kind of like you, right? Like th Twitter was the one platform that I wasn't on just because it was so like negative. And the thing that I like the most about threads is definitely what Shankar was saying about how you really get to connect with a lot of these like powerful, influential people, which I mean, for me, that's been a lot of the communities and circles that I've been in for the past two years. And you get to do it a good amount on LinkedIn. But I think the thing that I love the most about it is that whether somebody had like millions of followers or you were like brand new to social media, everybody was kind of just figuring it out together. And I don't think I've seen people have so much fun. Like there was just so many jokes, a lot of gifts. And I was like, I, the question that I have though, is I don't know how sustainable it's going to be in the sense that it pretty much, I know Nadia said that there's differences, but like, if you look at the core of the app, it's basically like what Twitter should have been. And 
the the scary part about it is we're only in the infancy and i know for a lot of people like instagram is like a massive app and platform what a lot of people don't know is that if you delete your threads you basically have to delete your instagram as well and looking i know a huge conversation that i've noticed in a lot of my communities is when you look at the privacy information uh, people think that TikTok is a little overboard they have access to pretty much everything through um when you agree it's like your financial information like all that type of stuff so it's interesting to see what happens but you know even if you make one powerful connection and this lasts like a week i would say that's worth it right that's one person that could potentially change your life so i've been enjoying it so far i think i need to hit it harder is what i'm learning from this conversation i don't post uh 20 times a day but i'll have to experiment so uh, thank you for allowing me to speak and i'm grateful to be here yeah and and if someone in the audience is like feeling overwhelmed by posting 20 times a day i just want to give context these posts are like a sentence and and it's basically just posting random thoughts or little inspirations that you have so you're not sitting there like curating a whole educational news article right so i just want to give that context uh najwa yeah basically well um uh, good afternoon everyone um for me i tried the threads uh just yesterday i was hanging out for the weekend with my friends and they were all just like you didn't like try the thread yes still i was like no yet so i have just downloaded yesterday and it was kind of different uh speaking of the facility it was too easy to download and from my instagram account there was that icon notification that you can like um download it but what was really um interesting for me it was like it's linked to the platform of instagram at the same time uh, there is no messaging icon so for me basically um because of my profile that there is not open bar for the message is okay it's fine it's good uh, at the same time, I'm uh, just wondering, like uh, the previous colleagues just have mentioned that um, the the consistency, and uh, would it be um, uploaded more notification, uploaded more facilities? Um, so this is the question mark actually. And the funny part of it, like uh, when I just like tried the, the thread, I have opened it, uh, the the platform. Uh, there was just like this meme is uh, uh, the face of uh, someone who is uh, just basically trying to enter to the thread, and every their friends that, that trying like uh, to that person to open an account on the thread. It was too matching to my feelings, so it was interesting actually, to be honest. Awesome. Yeah. And, and what I found is some people that that messaging thing, they can't message you on threads. So some people have actually come to Instagram or LinkedIn yeah. to message me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's weird it's because actually some of the threads are acting as messages. Like I've connected with people to the point where they're like, hey, I want to invite you to speak at this thing. And then I tell them where to message me, like, on the same thread. So it's almost mm -hmm. like it's so conversational that you could just tell them where to go, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Tella. And Tella. You have to unmute. You got to click the microphone. Well, then, uh, Shankar, go ahead. Yeah. So just uh, two reactions to what Paul said. Number one, you know, I, I am hoping that by us being good users of this new app and that by us all uh, uniting in creating good content it just gives me this newfound happiness and motivation to really massively post so that we can hopefully create a, a culture that is different to 
the apps we don't like or the aspects of the apps we don't like. I don't know how realistic it is, but it is certainly worth the attempt. And then the other idea around privacy, don't want to go into, well, if it, is it too much or not enough? But this morning, I really uh, felt very bad for my friends in Europe who are hearing all about threads right now and they can't download the app. And I, I really happen to believe that if regulators uh, impose such draconian um, restrictions, they really restrict their citizens from having access to something which could truly be one of the highest sources of of revenue and, and also brand building inbound leads in the future. So that is definitely something that was going on in my mind this morning. And I want to get some different perspectives to like, if you've never heard of it, raise your hand. If you're hesitant to, you know, just be on another social media app, raise your hand. Like, you know, this is, or if you just want to share your experience on threads, raise your hand. The way that you do that is at the lower right, there's like a little hand icon and all you have to do is click it. Well, I did have a little bit of a different thought. Uh, well, I guess Shankar sort, sort of started heading in that direction towards the end, but with Paul's point about it being sustainable, I mean, if you look at Twitter's business model, it, it it's very similar. Well, I would expect the way that they are generating revenue is also going to have to be through advertising for um, threads. And, you know, that when you talk about the DMs, being these open threads, I mean, that's kind of the crux of threads, right? Is that it's that at least that's how it seems to me, where it's this very conversational, open um, discussion. But when I think about, okay, so what, how are they going to make money? I mean, ads, it's, I don't see how it wouldn't be ads. And um, that's not a bad thing. It's what, you know, is, as they scale and continue to grow, they're going to have to be able to pay for all of the, the back end uh, to power this platform that we're using as much as we would love for it to all be free. It's not. Someone's paying for it. Um, so I'm not necessarily saying I have a problem with that. But when you do that, when you enter into agreements and partnerships and then there's licensing and all of this stuff, that's when it starts to become kind of complicated. And so right now, that's why, uh, you know, everyone is sort of enjoying it. There will be changes. Like, I think already they started implementing this privacy policy similar to what was on Instagram, and, and they say it very clearly. And now you can control who actually th threads you and who doesn't, whereas before there was, like, this direct access. And now, you know, obviously there's a lot of different characters in the world, so they had to, you know, regulate that feature, and I suspect there's going to be more changes that come. But our interactions will change, definitely. Emily. Um, I do have a different view. I, well, I'll, I have mixed feelings about it. Number one, I was happy to see an alternative. Say it with to your chest, Emily. Just let it drop. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It still is Saturday morning, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I was really happy to see an alternative to Twitter because I agree with what other people have said. Twitter has just felt overwhelming and in recent months has been more and more controversial. Um, and so happy to see that there's an alternative. And I also feel like threads is easier to engage on a more regular basis than or easier to quote unquote create content for um, than other social media platforms, which is a plus for me. Um, and at the same time, I just feel like, do we need another social media app? <laughs> like, really, what is this? I mean, I, I think about, um, like, what is this really doing for us as a society? You know, I, I, I am concerned about um, how much information, how much data they collect. Um, and I know they all do it, but they don't all do it to the same degree. And they don't all use it in the same way. Um, and I think as consumers, we would actually be well served to ask some questions about that. Like, why do they need to collect all of the data that they collect? 
Um, so I think we should just, you know, kind of recognize our, our power as consumers in that way and, and, and ask questions. That's okay. Um, the other thing that I think about, and, you know, this is newsy and this is like political, I think a little bit, um, or c could be made political, but, you know, it just has been what the fourth hottest day on record on planet earth, you know, that, that, uh, bothers me. I'm concerned about that. And when I think about all of these technological advances, it's like, well, why are we using like all of this innovation, all of this brain power, all of this people power, all of this economic power to create yet again, another social media app when we have like major problems that, um, you know, cause a threat to like human life on the planet, you know? So <laughs> what would it look like? if we use the same resources to create threads or any other social media app um, to like address this huge problem of our like warming planet. So yeah, those are my uh, thoughts on the Saturday morning. <laughs> no, and you're absolutely right. It's just, it goes against human nature. Like until our skin is burning from the heat, humans just won't take it seriously. Like, yeah, well, and I think, too, it's also like, you know, just I think, unfortunately, we live in a world that, you know, people have really accepted that it is OK to benefit at like the harm or disadvantage of other people. And I think that that really comes into play when we look at like why there is such um, I don't even want to say inaction, but why there's not more being done, like on a structural level to like address um our planet, you know, and, and the problems that it's having right now. Yeah, Emily, that, that's a good point. Um, I'll, there, there was news last week about NVIDIA combining their power in chips and AI to help climate researchers uh, do better models in forecasting and all of that. So I'm not going to go too much into it but the forecast net is that and then um, you know the the, con the conversation about data and taking too much i'm on a very different uh, side there like i'm like take all the data that you want because you make my experience better and it is always this um, two-sidedness where on the one side people don't want to give anything away about um, their you know information and preferences but then on the other hand they are happy when the algorithms are optimal and when the ads that they pay money for work well so there's got to be a, a happy medium there of course but uh, those are my thoughts and i'm gonna send you the link to that research projects on on the climate change it's a very interesting one okay sounds good thank you yeah and oh go ahead I'm I was just going to say, it's so funny that you say that, Shankar, because I don't feel like my experience is always optimized. I want to know who decided this was a good ad to serve me up. Like, who said that I wanted to see this? No, I just wanted a well, doggy the question stroller, is, not a do you feel that stroller, is for example, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, this data monetization, that's another thing that I was like, when these changes happen and they will happen, it's it's. You know, they, they're going to use this research. Well, they're going to first conduct more research on it so that they can, quote, you know, get more targeted marketing strategies. And then you can have, like, I'm interested to see if they do streaming, all of these kinds of things. And we'll see, like, how our whole experience ends up playing out. But I was really happy to be like, oh, none of the junk that's following me on these other platforms is here. And maybe that's because I have such an eclectic taste of music and people that I like if you look at oh please goodness don't look at any of the things that I follow but it's all over the place it's like yeah it's everywhere I'm so you know I have my academic moments when I'm just deeply pedantic going down the hole and then I have these others where it's like I just want to see cute puppies you know it's it's everywhere so anyway that's my experience 
Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to make the mistake and get in a, in a fight with you here on this platform. Oh my god. <laughs> do it. Do it. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, but I'm just like some people some It would be a mistake. For, yeah, yeah, okay. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I'll have to hear about it later. Actually, don't do it. <laughs> so, um anyways, uh and I think, you know, it's just going back to Emily it's sad, but that's just human nature. And even though we get older and have more generations, we really like the fundamental nature doesn't really change. You know, um, the only reason why people are so hype about AI now is because they saw the immediate gratification of ChatGPT. And when people saw that, all the investors are like, oh, this is real now. It's not happening in 50 years. It's happening now. And we're going to put all our money into it. And now, like, the spotlight, the spotlight's on there because the money's there. So it's kind of the same thing. Like, we just, the human brain, we want that today. We don't want it. Like, we understand 50 years. But most people are like, well, I'm not even going to be alive in 50 years. So it's just, it's very selfish, unfortunately. I wish I had better news for you. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I've worked so long in social justice, so I also just feel differently. I actually think like change is possible. And I think any positive change we've ever had, um, at least in this country and in most places in the world, it's because like, you know, a small group like originally decided to make it happen. And then that turned into like a medium sized group and then a large group and then a movement. So I do think change is possible, but I think people have to see the will. And I think more of what I hear from what you said is that people need an incentive. And um, I think there's been so much more of an incentive to develop, you know, technology and social media, AI. Um, and there hasn't been so much of an incentive to, actually, um, you know, develop the whatever it is that we need to address, um, you know, the warming planet and all the problems that will come with that. Um, it hasn't been incentivized. Therefore, people really, you're at least um, those who are producing the kinds of things that would actually make a meaningful intervention. They haven't done it because there hasn't been incentive. Um, at least that's one reason. So, um, but I do think change is possible. <laughs> we could do it. We have to just choose to do it, commit to it. And then for those uh, who would produce whatever it is, the interventions, you know, we have to incentivize for them. And, and that's okay as long as it means that everybody else has a shot at living a better life on this planet. So, okay, thank you. This has been a wonderful um, live audio room this morning. And I'm going to go enjoy my Saturday. <laughs> So thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right, she's done with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's it's true. Like it's it's sad. We use all this talent and skill for things that just provide more instant reward as humans. Yeah, humans like instant reward a lot, and that what that is precisely why change is so difficult. Um, when you really look at what people say and what they do, and where they spend their money, uh, that's two very different things. Uh, most of the money is spent towards um, your instant gratification, and you look a little bit ahead uh, for your children and people that you care about but people in the future the generations after us most people uh, it's, it's not really their top priority which in a way is is part of life it's part of survival of the fittest yeah so what don't we like about threads and if you want to come up and share, raise your hand. You could click the little button at the bottom. We have 10 more minutes left in the room for you to come up and share. That's so tough. I can't think of... I'm so curious, right? So I suspect that all the things I said, not all, 
But the thing I said I loved, which I'm, you know, not getting irrelevant information uh, may occur. The more that I use the platform, the more confused it gets. Uh, but I think right now there's still that just one singular feed, right? So there is no way to search for other than people. You can't like search specific channels or whatever. So I'm sure that will be something that I do not like uh, because it kind of cuts you off from what's happening in real time. That's something that I do like. But there's not a whole lot that I, the, the experience, the onboarding process was super seamless and, and easy. So I don't know. So I'll tell you one thing that I can't stand already is that every 10 seconds or 20 seconds, there's a suggested for you carousel thingy that pops up. And it's the same 50 famous people that I'm not on threads for that. I don't really, I mean, nothing against them. I just, it's not my cup of tea. So the first person I'm being shown is Kylie Jenner, then six, nine, then the NFL summer Ray, then Lele Pons. You have to really uh, know Shanae to know why all of this is hilarious. Or Del Corey, like, I don't want to follow these people or these brands. And it pops up like every 30 seconds as I scroll. Anyways, Jody. Oh my gosh. I've only seen it once. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. New app things are being rolled out. Um, but I didn't mind because my suggestion was, was Chris Hemsworth <laughs> and I hit follow on that. But I think one of the things I don't love, um, as, as a business owner, I just use my second phone to add. So that was just like a small, not a big deal. Cause I really am not there to even like promote our agency at all. Um, but it was just like a thought of like, Oh, I have multiple accounts. And then also as a brand manager, um, for one of my artists, I wanted to get her on threads pretty quickly. So I literally had to text her and artists just live in their own world. <laughs> and so that was the only thing I was thinking. It would just be nice to have that feature to like add another account. And I'm sure the social media managers want that too. But that's really been the only thing um, I've come across. How about the rest of you guys? I kind of wanted something that lets you do a live. I don't know if that should be reserved for other apps but a live audio feature would be pretty nice i think video or text i mean um, audio audio i would think i kind of like the idea of you know like Shanae, i saw um yours and just kind of like latched on to you before <laughs> I didn't even really know. I just sent your request on LinkedIn. But I like the funnel flow. It just worked really, really well. So I don't mind that that feature isn't there right now, especially because I don't know about you guys, but I just recently discovered LinkedIn audio. Is that new or am I just, have I been living under a rock? Yeah, it's pretty new. Okay, You're cool. not the only one. Half of the people that come to my rooms are like, I didn't even know this existed. I just clicked the notification. I love that. And for that, it's like, you know, I, I read your bio and for the past couple of days, I was like, okay, got to follow her on LinkedIn, got to follow her on LinkedIn. So that funnel flow worked really well. You know, when I saw that on um, threads, you're adding value and I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. This is the day. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. Everyone, we recruited someone from threads to the LinkedIn side. <laughs> I love it. What about you, uh, Paul? And that's a good question. Let's actually bring up that question because I got asked this really good question earlier. And, and for you, Paul, it would apply to you. Someone said, hey, Shanae, have you found over the last few days that Threads has helped your LinkedIn numbers? Or is the jury still out on that? I'm definitely curious how it's working for people who have huge footprints on other social media platforms. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So Instagram wasn't like a big platform for me. Like I spent most of my professional career in finance. So Facebook and Instagram weren't um, ideal platforms for me. But what I found is that because Threads has like the Twitter 
uh, feel. A lot of people on LinkedIn are also on Twitter and like that's how they, they, you know, kind of repurpose a lot of content is like tweets that they turn into LinkedIn posts. So it's actually helped me uh, kind of cross over a bit, which I thought was really interesting. And the only thing that I really don't like about it is I just like the the message feature, you know, like you're connecting with a lot of these like high profile people. And like, if you want to ask them like a personal question, it, it it's just kind of weird, you know, to put it out there. I mean, I guess like that's the chance you have to take, right? Like if you want their attention, but I just find that you have so much more high value conversations like in the DMs because there is like some privacy thing. So I would like to see a message feature kind of implemented where it's like you don't need to like okay take this connection and then go to linkedin and instagram kind of just a one-stop shop so that would be something that i would be curious to see i like it and you know what's interesting is i just tried something new um you know you could share your thread to your instagram story but i tried to share one with a youtube link in it and it won't let me. So, and maybe it doesn't let you share ones with links. Mm, that's interesting. I don't know about you guys, but I also feel kind of weird sometimes sharing a link. I think I'm just triggered. Like, is this going to decrease whatever lack of algorithm is happening right now? But I kind of like that um, people aren't super abusing it. It just works. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So, I mean, for everyone in the audience, I would, you know, if you want to check it out, create an account, it's a low barrier to entry because you don't have to create very much high level content. Um, you just literally share a few of your thoughts and then your Instagram, some of your Instagram followers will, will trickle over and we'll see. Right. Um, but Mark has built quite a few social media platforms. So I'd be surprised if this doesn't pass the test of time. Um, and the rate at which these big brands are on here and these huge celebrities will also, I think, add to it lasting the test of time because a lot of people will go where they go. So like even TikTok started, created an account and started posting uh, on threads today. So Netflix already posting on threads, um, UNICEF already posting on threads. I mean, and when I say po Fashion Nova, these brands are already posting like 30 times a day on this platform. So the more the biggest brands are active, the biggest influencers are active. It's like, again, human nature, people will just go where they go. And then personification, like personalization. I've noticed I've just been kind of like doing like my little nerdy market research because for the longest time, I think Wendy's and Taco Bell were, or Burger King were the leaders in this space where it was boots on the ground. When you, you pass by Wendy's, they're throwing shade at McDonald's on a sign. Now it's like, okay, Wendy's kind of dominated that space on Twitter, talking back to Burger King. So what I'm loving about threads is seeing Fashion Nova's personality, Spotify's personality, because we just weren't seeing that on other platforms. But I do want to give flowers to Wendy's because they've been doing that for years, years and years and years. That's awesome. See, I didn't know that. If you know, in a lot of Twitter, non Twitter users like me that weren't really there when that whole thing started, um, would not have known that. And I do see Wendy's already. Um, on threads, they did something funny yesterday, like it's time for a frosty, or they like said a pun about a frosty. It's frosty. I saw that. It was something frosty. like that. <laughs> but Steve, Shanae, this is the reason why I say Twitter is confused, Instagram's confused, because I have everybody there. Like I have random Wendy's or McDonald's or whatever, because they have witty people who are controlling their social media. And then I have something about neuroscience, or I'll have a completely different. It's just, it'll, it's, it'll be interesting. Yeah, they said, uh, I have it here. They said, about frosty o'clock by my watch. And they got 7,000 likes. 
I love that. I put its snuggle clock underneath. <laughs> That's funny. And again, I see other brands, not as big brands, but um, you know, some brands that friends of mine own, like marketing millennials and and that opens another conversation. Like if you have a company, this is a like Jody was saying, like this is a huge opportunity for you to humanize your company with these like, you know, show your company's personality, your your business brand's personality by doing little tweets like this. Like Fashion Nova did one yesterday, like what's the most toxic zodiac sign? And there was like <laughs> thousands of replies. But we're not going to say that my sign was mentioned the most, okay? It's probably me because I literally said definitely not Libra. <laughs> it's silly. But that's, I mean, that's powerful. If you get thousands of people to engage with a couple, to engage with your brand or even think of your brand three times a day, that's hugely valuable to them. And it's just incredible to me that people underestimate attention because you see the same people succeed over and over again. But then you also see that they're the ones that when something like this happens, they're also the same ones taking the most action. Like it's not an accident. Um, it's not an accident that these brands and influencers will dominate this space of attention because they're doing the work. So um, this also goes to prove the value of growing on any social media platform because you have a huge advantage. I see some TikTokers and YouTubers on there. Even I have an advantage, even though LinkedIn's a little bit different because most people on LinkedIn are LinkedIn evangelists. Like they're not social media users like that. But if you grow your platform on other socials, when something like this happens, you have first movers advantage. People from your other social media platform are going to that and following you there too, giving you a massive advantage in the beginning. So it's just... You know, it's incredible to see. I completely agree. And I think one great, uh, multiple things about being an early adopter, but one of it is just being able to speak eloquently, you know, like being part of this conversation and reminding ourselves that this also opens up additional PR for a personal brand. So um, just by posting about it a little bit on LinkedIn and you guys, I, I've been on this journey to a thousand followers. I think today might be the day, <laughs> but I have just, the Threads app had um, connected with me on LinkedIn, which I had been kind of like threading at them or engaging and they just weren't connecting with me there. So I thought that was really interesting just to be a little bit of a thought leader on a different platform and, and get that recognition. And then someone had reached out to me for like a little quote. So I was like, okay, just being visible here has or is slowly opening other doors through the personal brand just by other people seeing that I was an early adopter. Exactly. And, and, early, and it's good to also get in now because the same early adopters that I saw when Clubhouse started are, it's crazy. It's like the same group that I see now there. And, you know, you know, their behaviors repeat and these people are making moves and then you reconnect with some of these people that you haven't talked to in a couple of years since Clubhouse kind of died. And that leads to opportunity. So, you know, just watch because um, it'll probably grow and in, grow into something. But any final shares from the speakers on stage, if you're in the audience, follow everyone on stage. It takes courage to come to the stage and share. And, you know, people gave part of their Saturday for this. This was a really random room unplanned. So just give them a follow, uh, DM them if you're interested in learning more about them. And we'll, we'll share some final thoughts here. Yeah. Jody, Paul, just followed y'all. Making my way downtown. Mm -hmm. Going through everyone right <laughs> Uh, congratulations, Jody! You broke a thousand followers. I love these moments uh, because Yay. they're really gratifying. <laughs> uh, yeah. You guys, if I, let me add really quick. I have been working on this goal for about twenty days. I've been posting consistently awesome. on LinkedIn for twenty days, and um, the growth on Threads in three days. I was able to triple those efforts with minimal efforts, if that makes sense. So, posting every day on LinkedIn to get to a thousand followers, leaving valuable comments, like valuable versus just being myself 
quirky self on thread. So a case study right here, you guys. But thank you. <laughs> hmm. No, that's very true. And, I, you know, I like what was said earlier about the people who already did it once in the past. They're not complacent now. They're not lazy now. They have a new platform and this is very hard to delegate. I mean, you'd have to give someone your login and your or your phone for this to really be happening uh, in, in a form of delegation. So I do think that all of these busy leaders, busy CEOs uh, are spending their time right now to be active on this new platform. And uh, they know why. I think it's going to be uh, there is going to be a lot of rewards for all of us. Great share. Paul, do you want to say something? Yeah, I I just want to echo kind of what you were saying, Shanae, and it reminded me of something that my mentor always told me. And I remember when I first joined the mentorship community, I was like this shy person. And being a male is a massive minority in a lot of the communities that I'm in. And she said, you know, when something new and you have opportunity, go first and go fast. And to both your and, and Trey's point, like, we really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the reason why I was saying I'm not sure if it's sustainable is Elon Musk has already entered, you know, the legal realm of like lawsuits and stuff, because it is so much like Twitter. But like we were saying, right, even if you make one powerful connection, like Shankar did or Mark Cuban, like, if the app goes down tomorrow, that one connection is like a million times worth the effort that you put into it so i think that it really comes down to just making most of the time that you do have because such as life like there's so many things that are unknown and we just have to make the most of uh what we have so i'm definitely gonna uh, hit the app harder after this for sure this was uh, really insightful thank you you're welcome nadia hello everyone yeah um i wanted to share that with the audience here, we get opportunities once maybe in a decade where you can have the first mover advantage. And, and this is coming from somebody, you know, I have a PhD, a, an executive MBA, I'm tech innovation certified, and I help tech companies move their tech to the market. You don't get those opportunities very often. So take advantage of that. Have that first mover advantage build those relationships and you're gonna you're gonna have the compounding effect over time and that's like once in a decade on average opportunity so i encourage you test it out and uh, reap the benefits later thank you and a first mover advantage i love what you're saying nadia a first mover advantage with low and like point of entry because when i heard gary v three years ago or five years ago keep preaching about, oh, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. I still regret that I didn't take his word seriously because every early mover that got on TikTok grew millions and millions of followers, got huge brand deals. A lot of them then converted that audience to a huge YouTube channel that's now paying them six figures every month. And so like, like Nadia is saying, early mover advantage is real. And on this one, you don't have to dedicate hours a day to video content creation. You don't have to strategize how you're going to get someone's attention in the first three seconds of someone seeing your video. This is just right now written words. And I don't think there will be another opportunity with such a low point of entry for a long time. Exactly. That's, you hit the nail on its head here. And I really encourage you to test it out. You won't regret it and connect with people, like aim for building relationships, not shallow, pick one area, be yourself, just be yourself and have fun with it. And thank you yeah, for putting this fun. room together. You're welcome. We'll probably have another room and maybe next week and because it's only been a few days. So just thank you everyone for coming, for contributing to the conversation. Follow all the speakers. I'll give you about 10 seconds to do so. The way you do that is you click their face and then click follow. And then I'll see you next time, everyone. Well, I'll see you on threads. Ciao. <laughs>